competitors from all over the world here at the Skytrack World Finals. This is the guy who had to start it off in the pro freestyle. Kilowatt Kenneth Wood. You don't want that number one pick because the judges base, everybody scores off of yours, and it's very hard to get really good scores. Kenneth did a great job. He still finished in fourth. He won his first uh, tour round this year, I believe, in San Diego. We also check out our English contingent, Mark Curtis from uh, Dartford, England, a great, great competitor. The, the crowd really liked him as well. And then there's the old faithful, uh, Lloyd Ballou, Showtime. You know, this guy exemplifies the word Showtime. He has a great time for the crowd, shows how much balance he has over the boat. Uh, pulls out a lot of the ballet type moves. Lloyd Ballou, the 1994 national champion. When the Sketch Track World Finals, everybody pulls out a lot of new moves, uh, something that you don't see on their respective national tours, whether in Europe or, or Asia or the United States. And boy, they all come out big here. Douglas Carvalho, we've seen. Look how violent that one was. It still was not enough. He only finished third, but man, that was tough. The Brazilian uh, doing the fish walk out there after Chris Vichetti. And, and look, a new flavor, a rider, rider out there on the Tiger Shark does the kilowatt flop, but we're seeing pro freestyle and a rider on the runabout. It's much like the racing is turned to. And the power and grace of freestyle as well. Incorporating a lot of ballet and gymnastic moves. This was one of my favorites. Oh, and look at that camera shot. How much roost is he throwing up right now? Well, Rick Roy, certainly the favorite. The Canadian, he won the national championship. He's trying to make it world championship number two. And, uh, you know, he was definitely the crowd favorite. He had Super Rick t-shirts. Jet Pilot put those out. And again, look at him coming up with new moves, coming up out of the trade, no hands. Uh, Rick went big this time. The last three IJSBA Big Red Jet Sport Tour national championships went to Rick Roy, looking for his second title this year. Yeah, Rick has a lot of fans all over the world, probably the most publicized uh, of any racer in the personal autograph industry right now, just because he is so dramatic, very flashy. He looks sharp, he's a great guy, and he's a fireman uh, during his regular job in Montreal, Canada. New but, paint scheme and a new uh, suit as well. Yeah, they, they bring out, the, you know, all they cut all the stops here, you know, flips around backwards. They have the shiniest boats, the best wetsuits they can find. You don't want to spray the crowd out there too much today. It was a little bit chilly. Might have cost him a little bit, but uh, Rick's just having a great time. A smile stays on his face the entire time. Total control over his machine. Rick Roy, the reigning national and world champion. Look at him, one-handed, 180 nose stamp, comes back out of it. Again, he's an innovator of so many tricks. The Bronco Billy, now look at him. He's steering the boat, kneeling up on the handle pole, no hands. That's something we've never seen before. And Rick pulling out all the stops here at the World Finals. But the question is, Ralph, will it be good enough? Well, you know, you certainly had to think so after he was done because it was another spectacular performance. But Eric came out gunning for him. Yeah, Eric Malone won his first national stop at Dallas, Texas. Pulled off that move you saw just a moment ago, the no-handed aerial barrel roll. A very tough trick, and so far we still haven't seen anybody else in the world try it. And Eric, again, you know, just like Rick, he's going to pull out some new tricks, and everybody's expecting, you know, Eric to come up with something big. He's the newcomer, Kenneth Wood. He's taking over kind of positions you saw Lloyd Berlue or Mark Sickerling in the past. Sliding over the nose of the boat, twisting it around. Showing you just how much control he has over that boat. Hops back up in the tray, comes up one hand. It looks like he's trying to set up for a Hollywood corkscrew. The only rider who could have taken the spot away from Rick Roy at the top of the board. And Eric did not let anybody down. He had a very seamless performance. Right. He, he's showing you both aspects. The ballet type moves right there. Very good balance. He almost made a bobble right there and almost lost, you know, the boat a little bit to his right. Regained his composure and everything went smooth. A lot of people counted him as the, the favorite just by how good he was on the Big Red Chess Force Tour. Look at him throwing a different move there, the kilowatt flop. We saw other riders do it. He throws a different variable, kind of throws it around like a bicycle. Well, he had one more trick up his sleeve, and was it ever a big one? Watch this. Double trouble. Unbelievable. Oh, Look at him. He knows he did it. His last trick of the routine. Unbelievable power 
height, speed, and strength as Eric wins the world title. We're going to have a pretty big pro class next year. Uh, I'm definitely shooting for the national title as long as the world. Um, so the national is my next goal in mind. Eric Malone, the 1997 Scat Track World Finals champ. We'll crown the 785 Pro Runabout Titleist when we return. One of the largest crowds of the Scat Track World Finals, not for the racing, the bikini contest. Always one of the more popular attractions here in the Havasu City area on Scat Track World Finals weekend. This was not the winner. <laughs> How did he get in there? After the voting was completed, I got to tell you, my buddy Robbie Floyd somehow weaseled his way in. In fact, the entire television crew made crew call for this one, no problem. Chris Mullen was the winner. Look at Robbie working the deal down there. I don't know, Floyd, somehow you got to get me in on that next year. Pro run about 785 Moto 2 coming up. We had an opportunity to talk to the men who spin the wrenches about how to win this. Like Havasu is a one-shot race. It's the rider's race. Just go as fast as you can go and have a good time. What do you think about Montserrat's chances, even though it's his first year as pro? Uh, he looks pretty good over in the Rebe Yamaha. This is Havasu, man. Anything goes in Havasu. Well, Chris McCluggage was the one who went in moto number one, and he went in a big way. He dominated that one. Dustin Matsouris giving chase to him, was never able to reel him in. We'll have to see what happens here in moto number two. The boats with the impellers up out of the water set to go. We're underway. Screaming across the lake. Look at everybody fanning out as we take a look from the Kawasaki Jet Ski Sky Cam. Now you see why that split course is so important in the glare. Look how much of a problem is causing those riders the later part of the afternoon. From the inside and the outside lanes, and the Riva Yamaha out front again. McCluggage with another great start. Chris Machetti giving chase once again. Now we saw him fall back in the earlier heat. We'll see if he can hang on this time. Now Dustin Matsura is the South African rider, rides in third place. Right, Fischetti has the problems. That first moto, I'm sure Pops and him got things corrected. Uh, he's going to get a hard charge this second moto. Don't count Fish out for winning moto number two. He might not get the overall, but he'll, he's still a very fierce competitor. Matsuris giving us the look from the Yamaha wave cam as he tries to catch Fischetti just in front of him. Pops Fischetti, Chris's dad, is the man that spins the wrenches on his boat. Here we go along that long back straightaway. There you see the gap from McCluggage as he hangs the left. And there's Fischetti. Chris lives here, rides the lake all the time. So when it comes to winning at Havasu, he knows all the tricks, as he told us earlier in the day. A lot of uh, sweeping turns that you got to need to carry your speed and not turn too tight uh, all through the track. So it's that, you know, depending on the water condition. And if someone's close in front of you, they really mess up the lines that you need to get. So just stay out in front, get smooth water, and um, try not to make any mistakes. Chris doing a pretty good job of not making any mistakes right now as he holds on to second place over Dustin Matsuris, who rides in third, but he can't seem to make up any ground on McCluggage. Well, you heard him say it, get the whole shot and, and try and pull away while you have clean water. That's what McCluggage is doing right now. Fischetti in the little bit rougher water. He, he's having to go through some of the chop that McCluggage is, you know, resulting off of his boat, but right now Fish also can't go in that same way because it might cost him time. One name missing from that Polaris top five is still Rios. I'm surprised about that. Yeah, Rios, I, I could not even tell you. Uh, he, he's probably so aggressive that first moto, disappointed uh, back in the pits. Uh, who knows right now? Nicholas, he won that national championship. He knows the world championship's out of his reach right now. Dustin Matsuris, though, he's still on the hunt. He rides in third, trying to make up ground on Chris Machetti. And there's a young kid, again, his first year is a pro. I mean, I, I can't emphasize it enough. This kid has been so fast. His first year aboard a runabout. He rode sport and stand-up last year. What We know what's in the future for this kid. You see him banging his way around the buoys. And he's carrying our Yamaha wave cam. It's a little contraption that looks like a headlight mounted to the front of his Riva Yamaha. And that's Chris Machetti just in front of him. And he's making ground up on him. Yeah, he's closing in. He might be uh, new to the pro ranks, but he still knows racing right now. Fish, he had problems that first moto. Maybe he's uh, having problems the second moto. I don't know. Only time will tell. Remember, red buoys are lefts. Yellow buoys are rights. This is the back straightaway. 
And look at Monsters going to the inside that time, just trying to get a different line than Fischetti, not having to run in his wake. There's a look back to Bill Pointer, who rides in fourth. He's been in the top five in both motos. Bill Pointer, who moved over to Yamaha from Kawasaki. Yeah, Pointer doing a great job. He was the 1,200 world champion. He finally won his uh, world championship title as a pro for the greater Yamaha team, so he knows what it takes to win. He's trying to get a top three right now, too, and that puts uh, three out of the top four on Yamaha.